Good morning students. Hello students. In this video, we are going to continue with chapter 8 motion and the learning outcomes of this video are define uniform speed, non-uniform or variable speed, average speed, define instantaneous speed, define uniform velocity, define non-uniform or variable velocity, define average velocity and then you should also be able to define instantaneous velocity. Although the learning outcomes of this video are very simple, but they are required in your ninth class syllabus. Just because they are simple, we cannot ignore them. I want to cover each and every topic which is directly or indirectly required for the better understanding of this chapter. Now let us see first, what is uniform speed? When a body covers equal distances in equal intervals of time, then it is said to have uniform speed. And if you recall the same words we are using to define uniform motion, we could have also said for uniform motion we can say when a body covers equal distances in equal intervals of time, it is said to have uniform motion or here it is said to have uniform speed. Now next is non-uniform speed. When a body covers unequal distances in equal intervals of time, then it is said to have non-uniform speed or variable speed. Again, if we see, we can use the same sentence to define non-uniform motion. When a body covers unequal distances in equal intervals of time, it is said to have non-uniform motion. Average speed of a body, if you remember, we have done this in one of our, my previous videos, I have done it. Let us recall, average speed of a body is the ratio of total distance covered by it in uniform time. Instantaneous speed, you remember, this is a speed I have told you which is measured by speedometer of your vehicles. Instantaneous speed of a body is its speed at any instant during the motion. And now as you have understood what, is, what do you mean by uniform motion and non-uniform motion. And this also I have explained you in the previous videos. So we, you can easily say that during uniform motion average speed value is equal to instantaneous speed. In this case suppose if your car for certain period of time during motion, your speedometer of the car is showing the same value, let us say 80 km per hour. In that case, during that part of the motion, your motion is uniform, your speed is constant and in that case, if you consider average speed during that part of the motion, that will be equal to your instantaneous speed, with speedometer showing the same reading continuously. During non-uniform motion, we know speed is not constant. In that case, your instantaneous speed value continuously changes and average speed so is not equal to instantaneous speed. Now, let us move to the, the definition of uniform velocity. When a body covers equal distances in equal intervals of time, then it is said to have uniform velocity. But again, you have to remember that it should be along a straight line. When a body covers equal distances in equal intervals of time along a straight line, then it is said to have uniform velocity. And if you recall, this is the same definition that we use for uniform motion along a straight line. When a body covers equal distances in equal intervals of time along a straight line, then it is said to have uniform motion along a straight line. Now, non-uniform velocity or variable velocity. We know that velocity has two things, magnitude as well as direction. So, if any of these two things change or both of them change, then we can say that the motion of the body is Non is having non-uniform velocity. It means the body is having non-uniform velocity. 
So it is not only that if magnitude changes or if direction changes or if both of them changes, anything, any of these changes there, the body's velocity changes. Non-uniform velocity. When a body covers unequal distances in equal intervals of time along the straight line, then it is said to have non-uniform or variable velocity. Here I have used along a straight line because in this case we are considering that assuming that in a ninth class syllabus the motion is generally taken along a straight line. It means according to this definition I am considering that the direction is not changing only magnitude of velocity is changing. But you can remember that actually velocity can also change due to a change in its direction also. When a body, suppose if a car is moving straight when a car is moving straight with the speed of 80 km per hour in a straight line, then also if the body changes the direction, if a car takes a turn, then also its velocity is non-uniform. Or if a car is changing its speed but keeping the direction same, then also it is said to have non-uniform velocity. And if you remember, these words we have used for the same de definition of non-uniform motion along the straight line also. So we can say when a body covers unequal distances in equal intervals of time along a straight line, then it is said to have non-uniform velocity or variable velocity or it is said to have non-uniform motion along a straight line. Average velocity is a ratio of total displacement covered by the body to the total time taken. Yes, students, sorry, there was an error here. Average velocity is the ratio of total displacement covered by a body to the total time taken by it. Instantaneous velocity of a body is its velocity at any instant. The definitions are very simple and self-explanatory. Now, let us see why it was required to define speed. Why the concept of speed was required initially? Now, actually speed tells us how fast or how slow a person or a body is moving. Now consider this case, like in suppose 100 meter race, there are two persons who are participants of that race. If the first person takes time 10 seconds to complete the race and second person takes 20 seconds to complete the race, in this case, we have assumed that the distance traveled by both the persons is same. So in this case, if I ask you, who is faster? Obviously, distance is same. So you will say who has taken less time. First person has taken 10 seconds to travel this distance and second person has taken 20 seconds to travel the same distance. So easily you can answer that the first person is faster. Now let us consider the second case where there is no limitation of the distance traveled but there is limit of time. Persons have to run for 10 seconds and travel some distance. Let us say the first person has traveled 100 meter in 10 seconds and the second person has traveled 150 meter in 10 seconds. Now in this case time limit is fixed but the distances traveled depends upon different participants efficiency. So here we can easily see in same time period Second person has traveled more distance 150 meter than the first person who has traveled 100 meter. So again if I ask you who is faster you can easily say as a second person has traveled more distance in same time he is faster. So in order to answer who is faster or who is slower we have to concentrate on this distance and time. Suppose if I ask you who is faster you will see the time for the same distance you will see the time. A person who takes less time is faster and if the time is same then you will see the distance. The person who travels more distance is faster. Okay. In these two cases you can easily answer. But let us consider the other case where there are two persons. One person is traveling S1 distance in time T1. Other person is traveling S2 distance in time T2. Now both the persons have traveled at different distances and in different time intervals. So in this case, compared to these two cases, it becomes difficult to tell who is faster because in these two cases, at least in first case, distance traveled was same. 
In second case, time trip taken was same. So by seeing the other value, we could have ease, we could easily answer who is moving faster. But in this case, distances are also different, and time taken to travel those distances are also different in two cases. So it becomes very difficult to decide who is faster. So using maths, if we make this time interval to be equal, how we we'll make it equal? We'll consider. If S1 distance is travelled in time T1, then in one second what is the distance travelled? S1 upon T1. S1 into 1 divided by T1. Simple maths. And here again I am trying to find out the distance travelled by the person in one second. S2 is the distance travelled in time T2. So in one second what is the distance travelled? S2 into 1 divided by T2. This. It means by looking at the value of these ratios that is S1 upon T1 and S2 upon T2. What is this? Distance covered in one second. So seeing this, in this case indirectly we are making the time period to be equal and checking the distance covered. So by looking at the answers of these values, the, the ratios, we can easily answer who is moving faster. If S1 upon T1 is greater than S2 upon T2, well, then we will say S1 is the first person is faster. So this S upon T actually which is distance covered in unit time, we know it is called as speed. So thus speed is very important to know how fast or how slow a person is moving. I know the learning outcomes of this video were very simple and I hope you have easily understood. Okay, they are simple but they are required, you should know the definition. Thank you students.